Hi, I'm Ethan. And I'm Georgia. And yeah, we're related. And you know, I know what you guys are thinking. They're back on my phone, you know, back another video. What are they going to be talking about? You know, you probably didn't read the title. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're illiterate. You know, we want to kind of highlight a bit of a hidden gem. This came out recently, you know, in the last couple of years, 2019, I think. It is The Lost City starring Channing Tatum and Sandra Bullock. Definitely not new to the genre, Sandra Bullock or Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum, she's the man. Hello, Sandra Bullock, Miss Congeniality. Do not rewatch that film. <laughs> There's been lots of online discourse lately about the return of the rom-com. Rom-com's back, back in the sinners, blah, blah, blah. Rom-com this, rom-com that. And to my fans out there, also known as my friends who watch this, you probably know that I've been talking about how rom-coms need to need a comeback and need to be coming back in the cinemas because they are awesome. I love a rom-com. I love love. And so do you, unless you're a liar. Like, I don't want to like rom-coms. It's like, grow up, dude. Yes, you do. A movie that makes you smile. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. I would hate to have a chock top and I don't know, like cry when they kiss. Ugh. And I think what happened was there was a few box office failures you know, industries and studios started getting a little scared about their investments. You know, I get it. Big business. Yeah, well, they started, rom-coms were like, you know, declining in the box office and suddenly they're like, hang on, we can invest $300 million into a new superhero movie and that'll be awesome. <laughs> and that's what happened. <laughs> and that's how Madame Web happens. But it's not all doom and gloom. Like people say, there are still hidden gems out there. The heyday, you know, maybe the heyday is over, but it doesn't mean in the heyday you can't get a little hey pay or I don't, I don't know, some sort of <laughs> rhyme there. <laughs> But there's still good movies. <laughs> Such as in The Lost City with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. But the, the thing about this, it's not just a rom-com. It's a rom-com action adventure. I mean, come on. I want a silly little fight scene, but then I want a little bit of banter. Come on now. Beat me and then beat around the bush. Okay, well, let's just jump into our thinking was. was we're going to do a little overview, a little plot overview moment. And then we're going to jump into a synopsis and talk about our favorite parts. What do you think about that, Ethan? That sounds fantastic. So... Without further ado, Loretta Sage, played by Sandra Bullock, is a burnt-out romance writer whose grief after the loss of her husband threatens to derail her career. I mean, I wouldn't want her career to be derailed. Who? Either would I. Her disdain for her books is only matched by the dislike she has for her cover model co-star, Alan, played by the one and only Channing Tatum. Setting up a classic that we all love, Enemies to Love a storyline right from the starting line. And you know, Alan, he's seemingly a bit of a himbo and Sandra is not attracted to that. He's rolled out for signing events and we go from there. Let's drill down on that. So what happens in the first part of the movie? <laughs> Okay, well, a lot. The first 20 minutes, the screenwriting is really tight. I'll just say that. So essentially, Loretta is at an event promoting her book. And as she's leaving, she is kidnapped. Taken. By Abigail Fairfax, explorer rich guy, otherwise known as a colonizer. Otherwise known as played by Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Call me by your name. <laughs> and essentially, he has purchased the lost city of D, which is what the book is about. And An ancient civilization that is historic, historically accurate in the movie's universe. But Sandra was working on her PhD about this and her and her husband used to write about the lost city of D. So he has found this purchased this island but he cannot find the lost treasure there is one he's got this little parchment with some ancient language on it that he needs her to translate because she's the only living person who can translate it and that's why he's abducted her so alan mounts an ill-advised expedition to try and rescue you know his Himbo. his love and you know along the way he gets help from his meditation guru jack trainer played by brad pitt another star Come on. <laughs> And Loretta's agent, beloved agent, Beth, helps as well. Okay, so we've got a grieving widow. What do we need, Ethan? It's cinema. She needs a bath. She needs a Chardonnay on ice. And she needs to be called out for it. <laughs> and that's what this film does, honestly. It's such a trope, but it's so good. It's like, yeah, fair enough. You would low-key be an alcoholic. You're the love of your life's dead, babe. <laughs> I don't like that kind of connotations you're putting on it what you can't have one wine in the bath and be called an alcoholic come on now well i mean every time i have a glass of wine the way you look at me yeah because you never have one but in the scene we actually get introduced to alan's character it's pretty iconic that at the uh the press event for the book and you know sandra bullock comes out and she is very awkwardly kind of mounting a stool i could give you a little demonstration no, i can't because i couldn't do it as awkward as she can <laughs> But, um, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, it's like, oh, you kind of get loser energy. And then, and then the moment the whole crowd's waiting for Channing Tatum, Alan comes out. The 
final countdowns playing. Like, it's just so iconic. He's just like, comes out and you're like, oh, who is this guy? He picks Sandra up, like does a little spin dance with her and then mouths the fuck out of that stool. He's immediately commanding the screen. <laughs> and Sandra's there. Yeah. <laughs> and that's also what they're trying to set up. And boy, do they do it well. I would also say that they're both such good physical actors. Like the physical physicality and the physical comedy of this film is pulled off because they're, they're good at it. You could be visiting ancient Greece. Okay, how could I visit ancient Greece? I get it, because you're afraid of flying. No, because ancient Greece is in the past. Okay, this scene is really funny. Like, you know, well written, but it's like they're trying to paint Tatum here is like the himbo, but he's right. You can visit ancient sites in Greece. We've literally done it. We've been. We just wanted you guys to know our culture. Yeah, we travel. <laughs> All right, did you guys actually know we went to Europe? You're so afraid of life hurting you again that you've stopped living. You're like a human mummy. I, I didn't know. Um, uh. Mummies are humans. This human, um, I mean, mummies are humans kind of little gag. It's funny and, you know, it's just, it's kind of an, it's kind of like a little nothing kind of joke. But within the movie, it gets brought up like another three times. It's just funny, like, you know, how tightly written it is that they, they do this callback to literally like 30 seconds ago and then further on in the movie, like maybe 10 minutes later. Yeah, it's incredible, actually. Like, I feel like they literally do like two callbacks in 30 seconds of the joke they've literally only just established and then bring it up again in what? A silly fluff piece action comedy rom? Like, yeah. sorry, this writing is good. It's like, they're like, okay, we nailed it with this mummy joke. Let's tell it a few more times. <laughs> I, I, I called her a human mummy. Mummies are human. I, I'm aware of that now. Yes. There's also just like these, they're just all these random little funny one liners that, you know, delivered poorly could be bad but because the actors like Channing and fucking Sandra, Sandra they're, they're, they're delivering and it just makes it so funny. And it's not just them because then there's also this little side character. Follow that SUV, man. No, no, come on, come on, please. Oh, no, no, I'm not helping any more handsome strangers. Only once. Mm -mm. We never see this guy again. It's like, <laughs> but it's just a good, silly little line. And I think honestly, it must be a testament to how also like the production happened. Like it must've been a fun set to be on. Yeah, but it also makes it, this line so funny because it's like, it makes you think, it's like, I wonder what happened to that guy when he helped the last handsome stranger. <laughs> I want to <laughs> know now, like where's his spinoff movie? Okay, deep into act two, we see Radcliffe and his goons arrive on the island and they tie Laura up to a chair, she's chained, and they ask her to translate the piece of parchment that leads to the lost city and the treasure. Is she tied or is she chained? She's tied or chained, either way. So then next we see Alan and he's meeting up with Jack on the island. And you know, Jack tells Alan to stay, that he's not having a bar, but Alan wants to come on the mesh rescue mission. You know, he wants to do his part to help Loretta out. Uh, you know, Jack's like, oh, I don't want you to. And then we see Jack go. He like assassinates nine baddies or something like that and rescues Loretta. And Alan does tag along and he doesn't help at all, but he's there. Hey, well, that's like me for most things. My friends, it's called emotional support. But well, wouldn't you want a familiar face? Like, honestly, honestly, if you're in that scenario, you're overseas with some random ass guy and then some other guy comes and he kills like 10 guys and he's like, you're coming with me. You're like, oh, okay, Alan's with him. It's probably cool. Exactly. Honestly, like what, Sandra was just going to jump in with Brad? I mean, I would. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this little segment is great. Like, you know, between, we get lots of clips between Brad and, um, Channing and their, their comedic chemistry together is so good with, you know, Brad Pitt playing the straight man. It's like you thought, you thought Chan Channing and Jonah were killing it, babe. You haven't seen Brad and Channing. Yeah, they're on fire. I, I, I love that, that one clip where... Are you keto, by the way? You look like a keto. No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> You don't need it. So it's like, oh yeah, obviously he isn't fucking keto, bro. He's Brad Pitt. Well, Brad Pitt just wakes up looking like that. If I wanted to look like that, I would need to keep it. That's why he's paid millions of dollars, because he wakes up looking like that. Seriously. Maybe he does. That's keto. why I get paid nothing for waking up. Maybe he does keto. <laughs> Maybe that's an inside joke. We've got to look at it. <laughs> I'm like a Vogue magazine 2014. He told us he did keto. Can I at least do the part where I put her in the car and I just go, shh. Sure, champ. She'll love that. It just sums up kind of the dynamic that they do have it on screen as well. And you know that's such a gut punch. He's gonna be thinking about that for years to come. I'm still thinking about it weeks to come. Like, if you call me champ, like, who hurt you? It's like, and Brad, it's Brad Pitt calling you champ. Oh. <laughs> so, Jack frees Loretta and they run to the escape car, but. Shh. 
You're safe now. You're... Oh. Oh. Say goodbye to Brad Pitt for the rest of the movie. Yeah, so if you thought Brad was a handsome snake, well he is. But he's handsome enough to get away with it. Well, he doesn't get away with it. If you say it, you know, it's like... He agrees. He's like, yeah, sure, dude. You, you comfort her. That's all good. You say that line. And then he says it. Boom. You're going to get shot in the head. So PSA to all you snakes out there. <laughs> Have you had your experience with a snake? I've been bitten by one in my room. <laughs> and then dad chopped its head off with an axe. <laughs> that is. And to any of our non-Australian viewers, if you're out there, that is a very common occurrence. <laughs> okay, down on that. Anyway, this leaves Alan and Loretta to escape through the jungle by themselves. In the night, they share a bed together, a very classic enemies to lovers trope, which we love. And then they get found by the goons the next day and they try to run away. Yeah. But let me tell you, they can't. And so they, Alan hatches a plan. He kills two of them. Uh, there's lots of good little moments throughout this kind of, this whole big, se it's really quite a big sequence. What, are, what is this? Boots of the jungle. Well, it's not exactly hiking boots, but... Well, you know, you need to jump boots. You do need boots. And what kind of boots? Just any, I think. <laughs> they never really say. <laughs> they honestly don't say. And so you can see how Alan get confused. Because, you know, Loretta's rocking an amazing jumpsuit, which is also kind of key to the plot up time. Cute, cute jumpsuit. And he's like, well, what will match that? I know. High heel boots. High heel boots. Um, also, I feel like the writing at this point is like just getting so incredible. There's like a, a really good moment where he's like unpacking the bag. What else does he have? He's got high heel boots. He's got cheese. He's got low blood sugar, much like Ethan. And the other most important thing he, he packs is bottled water, but he wants Loretta to know that he's a recycling man. Yeah. He's like, don't, don't worry, worry. Don't worry. We are going to recycle this. You know, I just got to the airport. They didn't have any glass or would have got that. But it's also like, you can reuse a, a plastic. Is the same, you can reuse glass. But he's not saying that. We're not going to get into that. Like, there's this really good point part where essentially, like, they just kill these two people, and what you don't see in action movies, like, they always accidentally kill people, and they look at each other like, did we? Yeah, they're like, oh, they're, they're coming to the shock horror that they've act. They're just two regular people, and they've just killed. Even if these people were trying to kill it's like, oh my god, I just killed, they ended two people's lives. Like, oh my god, they had moms, like, they had, they, know, they had families. And then they start trying to, you know, they're trying to justify it. Like, Rationalize. Well, yeah. Even if we weren't here, that could have happened. Yeah, maybe they lived, like, <laughs> it wasn't that far of a drop. And you see them come into terms in real time that they've just killed these two guys. And you know what? The movie's real for that. It's like an earnest moment in the film, which is good. Yeah. And yeah, this whole section is really tightly written. Here's another little funny clip. So you can have your cake and get what you want. And eat it too? If that's what you want to do with your cake, fine. Let's go. And while we're on the topic of... Just funny little one-liners. There's also a bit where Alan says he doesn't do water. <laughs> it's like when they have to swim to, through a it's lake like, to a swim. I don't do water. Like, yeah. imagine writing like the script live as like one line, Alan, do water. Like, yeah. okay, my no. drop. Like, no one's pulling yeah. that on the channel. No, that's it. It's like, we're, we're praising the script, but that's not a good script. That's just Channing Tatum and being like, I don't do water. And you're like, oh my God, he doesn't. <laughs> no, I don't, I, don't, I don't really do water. I feel like... Channing Tatum cannot contractually, legally, spiritually be in a film if he is not dancing. Like, he gets the script and he's like, doesn't matter if it's an action, doesn't matter if it's a high intense drama, step up. For example, drama, that's a dramedy. Dancing best. Dancing best dramedy, but he's like, please write them in. Like, it's like he is literally running through the jungle for his life, for his love, for his treasure. And he's like, wait, I'm a salsa. I kind of hate what you're saying, like you would. You're in such a, you've, you've escaped, you've made it. You're with someone you love, you're on a high, high fucking stakes adventure and you, you pretty much, you get to this local kind of town, little taverna kind of situation. You hear a little strings playing. There's an old lady who just needs to be danced with. You're going to do it. Can you twirl a woman? Have you twirled a woman before? Of course I've twirled a woman and I've twirled a man. <laughs> Good for you. Get them both, babe. I'm surprised you've twirled. Everyone's fucking twirled. <laughs> yeah, I know, like, you guys might think at some sections we might be reading off something, but actually there's just a really funny dog down there. <laughs> you have this dog named not, Boris? We're not, not going to show him. He's a bit camera shy, but he's cute. <laughs> he takes after me. Camera shy and cute. And charming and funny and handsome. Okay, what are we doing right now? <laughs> okay. But yeah. <laughs> That's so no script. So the lovers are dancing <laughs> together all is well until <laughs> Radcliffe and his goons appear. The local authorities have ratted them out. 
So honestly, like, I saw this come. Like, why would you tell the, it's this tiny island that he owns? Why are you going to go to the fucking police? But they do. So he. Okay, A cab. <laughs> so he comes with his goons, and Loretta gets captured yet again. Yet again, easily uh, captured. <laughs> yet again, authors apparently easily captured. Yet again, Alan launches an uh, ill-advised rescue attempt. He, he manages to dust some bad guys off. He's got some of that Jack trainer in him. He actually has a WWJTD moment. What would Jack trainer do? Uh, that was like a WWE moment, <laughs> like an Iron Claw moment. And he fucks a few people up, but then he ultimately gets captured as well. Is that a Ken doll on a moped? So luckily, Beth comes to the rescue she demands help from the local authorities using the smartwatch to track them down you know i've been trying to take a nap for a year and a half a year and a half thank god for that galaxy or i don't know i'll throw up a little screenshot but i've never seen that smartwatch it's kind of out of this <laughs> it's galaxy something it's out of <laughs> out of they were like oh we'll take paid sponsors from lots of other people but we're keeping these smartwatches off base apple samsung we're not weighing in on the debate but also, I just want everyone to know that one of us is on Strava, but neither of us have a smartwatch. So, Beth is to the rescue, and at this point, Loretta, Alan, Radcliffe, two bad guys, one of which is, throughout the movie, we kind of see, he's not really happy with how the shit's been running, so he's kind of dissenting. So, they're at the volcano, inside the volcano. It's about to blow up. Look, they've found the lost treasure for it only to be made of seashells. Where's the treasure? She's holding him. And, you know, it's, a, it's actually a bit of a metaphor because the treasure is what's his love, the, the king's love for his partner, which is a, a beautiful little metaphor that they touch on. It's so beautiful. And each seashell he bought her each day to prove his love. I know. It's like, because the thing is, we're not all going to be rich and famous, but we all can find love. And that's a treasure in itself. And that is literally what Married at First Sight is trying to achieve. Radcliffe is furious and forces essentially Alan and Loretta into the, into the tomb when he realizes this. He's like, because they're all laughing. They're talking about this beautiful... Loving metaphor. He's like, get in the tomb, get in there. Yeah. And then the dissenting baddie, before he leaves, slips in a crowbar to help them escape. Which they use to escape. Crazy, that. They were like, oh, is that for us? I think it might be. Boom. So they escape, they narrowly escape, popping out in the water. And Beth is there is with her Beth? boat <laughs> and the authorities. Is that, is that Beth? Yeah. Her, has she been looking for us this whole time? <laughs> it is funny. It's like, she didn't really do shit. They escaped. <laughs> <laughs> but she was there. Yeah. And sometimes that's all you need. Yeah. Someone there on the other side of the journey that you've been through. Mm. Whoa. Deep. So throughout this kind of, you know, Beth, she doesn't help, but she does give a lot of Matthew McConaughey, Tropic Thunder kind of energy, the agent on a mission. They do or die odds, really, to try and save the day. Devo! My friend wants a Devo! I kind of think it's a bit of a, you know, a nice reference, bit of an ode to a classic. I actually think it probably is. Yeah. I definitely think it's an intentional, like, yeah. parallel they're drawing. And, like, sorry, like, to make a character paralleling Matthew McConaughey, like, what an honour. At this point, they're rescued, and it switches back to the narration we hear at the beginning, which is very rom-com, L-O-R-E, very rom-com trope. It's rom-com. It's rom-com. It's com, it's rom, bro, it's adventure. <laughs> It's everything. It's the mummy. Anyway, a book tour is coming to an end for Loretta and Alan when we switch to this narration. They're at a resort and they're ready to begin their... Next adventure. Next chapter. Next Talk chapter. Because it's books, guys. It's books. It's not adventure. They're ready. And they share their first kiss. <laughs> Loretta and Alan are on the page and they're ready to start their new chapter with their first kiss. Sorry, guys. I've been getting a little crazy. I had one... No sugar seltzer. He's a no sugar head. kind of guy. If you think we're a Coke Zero household, we are. I had two today at work. Fuck you. A, you never bring really I work. can't, bro. Well, I can go to the end of the day and start loading my toad up with the Coke No Sugar. Just one, not loading them up. One. I would get drunk on the way home. Okay, so after we've had a little, <laughs> that's probably not going to make it, but maybe it does. So we've had a little discussion there. We love. Should I buy the dress? We love this movie. It's. Awesome. It is a bit, it is reminiscent of The Mummy. I would say this is more rom com than The Mummy. The Mummy's more adventure with mm. a slash of rom and a, a slash of com. 
That's true. This is more heavy on the ROM, but I feel like they're very, like, from the same... Like, there's an overlap, like a Venn diagram of these two movies. Like, they're very closely aligned. Oh, they're a genre. Like, for sure. And I feel like... This is a movie you should definitely go and watch if you yeah. have not seen it's it. It's on Netflix, guys. It's I know we just like, we, yeah, we spoiled the whole thing. <laughs> that doesn't mean you can't still watch it. We watched it about three times. I'm still watching it in the future while I'm editing this. Like, I, I this is back in the past before it's edited. I'm gonna have to watch more of it to edit this thing. I'm watching it again. So should you. <laughs> I think it's also on the most easily accessible platform. I know everyone's like platform crazy and like has six million, but like everyone has Netflix. So. Go and watch it. It's a great movie. Let us know if you watch it or you've seen it, what you think in the comments. We'd yeah! love to. Because you know what? We don't get many, so we'll definitely respond. Hey, let us know in the comments what you think or maybe what your favorite rom-com is. And maybe I, we'll watch it. And we will watch it. Perhaps review it even. But we definitely love a rom-com. If you love rom-coms, stay on our channel. And just to end this, shout out to Luca. I know you're watching this. This was staring me in the face the whole time, so I thought I'd show it. Isn't he a model? He's yeah, gorgeous. He's a model, well, there's only one thing left to do. <laughs> ah, no, I'll go again. Bro, you've lost it. It's been too long. There we go. Good. That's good. Ended on that. Boom shakalaka.